going on guys? It's Matt back here with another video. Today we're talking about the 7 Artisans 25mm f0.95 lens. It's definitely a beauty. I'm going to do something different this time and talk about the image quality first and then the physical aspect second. And obviously there is no autofocus. I don't think there's any 0.95 lenses out there that have autofocus. But yeah, let's start with the image quality of this lens. So I already showed you a bunch of image examples from this lens at 0.95 at the beginning of this video. Um, so you, you could get some sense of the character. I think there is a little bit of a color cast. It, it's a little bit cooler whenever you go to 0.95. Um, and then the, the color is a little bit more true whenever you, you change it to starting even at 1.4. So I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side example of the same subject, which is just my stand, taking with the 7 Artisans 25 0.95 and then the 50 0.95. You'll see that the 25 0.95 is sharper, which I would expect and I would hope because it is a more expensive lens. This is coming in at nearly $400 compared to the 50 0.95, which whenever I received it for testing was $250. With the subject at minimum focus distance on both of these lenses, you can see that it's basically the same size in frame, but obviously the 50 millimeter 0.95 can't focus as close, so it's farther away. So there is a difference in background compression and perspective. I just wanted to show you that side by side example so you can get a, a feel for what this is like compared to other 0.95 lenses. That's the only one I I own and it happens to be the seven artisans one. I do think this is optically superior, but as I said, I would hope so for the higher price. Another thing that this lens has over the 50 0.95 is that it has a lot less chromatic aberration. Um, this has three Hoya extra lows dispersion elements. I think the 50 0.95 had two, um, but maybe it's also because of the focal length and the backgrounds aren't so intensely blurry at this wider angle focal length, but, uh, yeah, the, the, I don't see nearly as much chromatic aberration. Sometimes there is just a touch, especially in, in glaring highlights. I do see actually green rings about around uh, bokeh balls, but other than that, in like most shooting conditions when you aren't just like shooting out of focus lights in, in your room, um, I don't notice any chromatic aberration in like real world scenarios. And much like the 50 0.95 from Seven Artisans, this 25 0.95 is a completely different lens after you hit even like f1.4 or f2. It's very, very sharp, like competing with Fuji lenses, I think, except maybe this one, the corner sharpness is is maybe not quite as good. I didn't really notice that as much with, with the 50 0.95, but if you are pixel peeping, I did notice some, some the corner sharpness wasn't as good even when you stop it down, but um, I don't think it's gonna affect like a well-composed image. Like this will capture that very well. And uh, you know, if you have a good image, people aren't gonna be like, oh, the corner is slightly softer <laughs> than the center. So um, I don't think it's that much softer that you really have to worry about it with this. So just to give you an idea of how sharp this lens is, I have stop down tests on multiple real world subjects, not just like test charts. So you can see in the real world, how the different apertures look on this lens. It does have 13 aperture blades, like the 50 0.95. So the bokeh is really smooth all the way through the aperture range. But yeah, take a look at these stop down tests. So now we're on to the physical aspects of this lens. And every Seven Artisans lens that I've tested so far, it seems like they, they take a lot of pride in the physical build of them. And this is no exception to that. Uh, just like the, the 50 0.95, it has that beautiful gunmetal lens mount, which I am a huge fan of. It's pretty big. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a fat lens, but it's more long than anything. It's, it's longer than the 18 to 55 kit lens. It's longer than the 16 1.4. I think maybe it's not as long as the Viltrox 85 1.8, but it is certainly a lot heavier and denser because um, it's just all metal and glass. Um, I have it written down here because I never remember this kind of stuff. It has 11 elements in five groups, which is kind of a lot for a prime lens. It's because it has, like I mentioned earlier, three corrective Hoyo extra low dispersion elements to, to correct the chromatic aberration. But um, yeah, it's very dense, heavy lens, front heavy. Without this grip on my camera, I think it would be Actually, I know because I, I, I tried to shoot it without the grip. It is not nearly as comfortable. And even with the grip, it makes the camera kind of want to go like this. So it's uh, it's better to shoot with two hands. Just as any high quality manual focus lens, it has a very smooth focus turn. 
It's pretty short actually, and I, I find it's especially short towards infinity. It's good whenever you're up close on subjects, you can get some pretty fine focus adjustment. And this has a, a really nice minimum focus distance of 25 centimeters, which paired with the 0.95 aperture can get you extremely crazy blurry backgrounds with a really cool wide angle perspective because you can get even crazier, crazier blurry backgrounds with the 50 millimeter 0.95, but it's like almost too much. <laughs> but the 0.95 aperture on this lens combined with the interesting perspective you get from the focal length makes for some really interesting images. Just like the 50 0.95, it has a clickless aperture, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but because it's at the end of the, the, the other end of the lens compared to what I'm used to on like Fuji lenses, um, and the lens is kind of long, I never find myself really, really bumping it because I always grab farther back on the focus ring. Um, so it's, it's really a non-issue. So I'm starting to get a little bit annoyed with these friction-based lens caps. Um, the past two I haven't liked. I've only, this is the third Seven Artisans lens I've reviewed. So, uh, but, and they've all had friction-based lens caps. So that, in my mind, that's, I associate that as like Seven Artisans thing. Um, but I only really appreciated it on the 50 0 0.95 because it was deeper and it didn't really fall off as easy. On the 35 1.2, which I previously uh, reviewed, it was a much shallower lens cap and the, the part that it actually went onto was a part that went in and out as you focus. So sometimes it would get so shallow whenever you focus to uh, infinity, I guess. Yeah, that, that's what it would be. Um, and that it would just, it would fall off so easy. And and this one is is pretty shallow as well. And I have noticed, um, not really when I'm shooting, like I, it doesn't really fall off like that, but especially when I put it in a bag and I'm just trying to transport this lens, it I always open the bag to find that this has fallen off and then there's stuff all over the front element of the lens. So I'm constantly having to clean it, which I don't really want to be touching it that much. So um, at this point it's either make deeper friction-based lens caps or just get rid of them and go with a normal lens cap because it's starting to become a problem with like messing up the front element of the lens. Speaking of the front element, it has a pretty cool concave front element. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to really show it on video, but it is uh, pretty beautiful in real life. So my final thoughts on this lens, I really do love the character that it produces, the 0.95 images especially after a little editing, like as you'd expect, they don't have the most contrast in the world, but you can always add the contrast in post. You can't really get the sharpness back. So they are going to be soft images at 0.95, but I think you should probably expect that um, or come to expect that if you've ever shot with like a 1.2 lens or anything that's zero, near 0 0.95, um, especially at a wide angle. Like there's a reason that this is like basically the first of its kind. I don't think there's any other lens like this on the market, whereas this wide of a, a perspective and that also that wide of an aperture. So it's kind of expected that if it's that hard to produce optically that nobody's doing it, that it might not be the sharpest thing in the world. But overall, it is a very impressive lens, especially even at 1.4, I'm very happy with it. But the 0 0.95 images, um, especially if you aren't focusing completely at the minimum focus distance, I think that's where it's especially soft. But if you, if you're doing like it, this really shines for like environmental portraits. So if you're, if you have someone a little bit farther away and you're trying to, to get them in the context of their environment, but you still want to have that, that magical separation, which it, it has a really awesome look whenever, whenever you do that. I have a video example here, actually shot of, uh, cars on the lot. I work at, I, I do videography at a car dealership. And um, I had a 0 0.95 and I was basically focused to infinity. And then I, I slowly racked focus through the cars. And you can see, even though they're so far away with the 0 0.95 aperture, you can still single out individual cars. Like that's how shallow your depth of field is. And that's very interesting and fun to play with on a wide angle lens like this. So should you buy this lens? Am I going to directly recommend this lens to you? I don't know. I would say you really have to think about it because nearing $400, that's becoming pretty expensive for a third party manual focus lens. And you could really, you could get the 23 F2 from Fujifilm and have an autofocus lens that's a lot more versatile. So really think about, especially if you're a beginning photographer and this is your first lens or even your second lens, um, think about getting an autofocus lens instead because you'll, come to learn and grow a lot faster. This is gonna challenge you a lot more for sure, but I'd recommend if you're, if you're getting a first lens or a second lens or something like that, and you, you want 
I don't know. This is like a really nuanced, specific kind of lens because you can get the the 23 1.4 for basically the same price, maybe a little bit more expensive, but that's a Fujifilm first party lens with autofocus and has amazing rendering. I don't know. You, you have other options at nearing that price point in this focal length. So um, think about, do you really, really need the 0 0.95 or is a 1.4 good enough? And in that case, you could go for the much easier to use autofocus lens out there. But um, if this is, if you're absolutely sure this is the character you want to go for, I, I'm pretty sure this is your only option. So um, it's kind of interesting. It's just like I'm, I'm shooting this review on the 16 millimeter 1.4. And the most magical thing about that lens is the minimum focus distance and the 1.4 aperture. So you can get a really interesting, even though it's wide angle, you can get something very close to the lens and focus on it. And that's a very interesting perspective. And that's the same concept that this that this lens has where it's not as wide angle, but it has an even, even wider aperture. So um, that interesting concept, the reason that so many people like the 16 uh, 1.4, people might also like this 25 uh, 0 0.95. So, okay, I'm, I'm done rambling. I, I did really enjoy reviewing this lens. So, you know, my my recommendation is is if you have a very specific need for it, but otherwise maybe just consider going with a first party lens or, or something just smaller and lighter and uh, potentially with autofocus. So um, thank you for watching. Leave a like on this video. Um, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Did I mention everything you wanted to hear? Is there anything I didn't mention that you did want to hear? Let me know. I have two more seven artisans lenses that I was recently sent that I'm going to review. The first is the 60 millimeter 2.8 macro, which is what you guys voted for that you wanted me to review first. And then I have another 25 millimeter, but it's the 1.8 version and it's so much smaller and lighter than this. So um, yeah, those are coming up in the future, but I'll kind of break it up so I don't seem like a seven artisans fanboy over here. Though I have really enjoyed their lenses so far. I think the, the 25 1.8 might be the first that I'm not the happiest with. Um, just a little foreshadowing. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.